Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla. This is my third quarterly wrap up of 2023. Basically what I do in these videos is just give you some stats. I share these little stat things in each wrap up but I never talk them through and I use my quarterly update to talk about those and also just like kind of promote my own content and tell you all of the videos that I've made and all the books that I've read for them. I feature all of my favorites from all of the videos that I've made, like a couple from each. And then I tell you my five favorites at the end that I read in the last quarter. So that's what we're up to today. In June, 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 July, August, no, July, August, September. Okay, July, I read 19 books. August, I read 19 books. September, I read 23 which equals 61, a very unsatisfying number. I'm gonna try to make it round by the end of the year because it's very important to me so I can make all of my graphics um, and everything really even. You know, if you wanna accuse me of reading for the aesthetics, you go right ahead. That totals 18,665 pages, which actually works out to like 200 pages a day, which doesn't feel like that much. So I guess when people ask me like, how do you read so much? I, I know I do, like 200 books is a lot for a normal person. Did I say 200 books or 200 pages? <laughs> oh, also, I've read exactly 200 books this year. But anyway, 200 pages is completely accurate. I probably listen to an hour of an audiobook a day, probably, and two hours, one to two hours of physically staring at a book. What else do I do with the hours in the day? I edit and I film. I have posted 26 public videos in this last quarter. 13 of them were sit down videos, 13 of them were vlogs. I also did three book club live shows in addition to those 26, um, and five custom videos for members, 13 live streams for members, including movie nights and game art nights, reading sprints, book clubs. So in total, in the last like 90 days, I have posted 47 videos. That's pretty much a video every other day. So I love that. And let's go through all of them. The most amount of books that I read for any video in this quarter was my reading like a visco girl video. I read 10 that I found on Instagram and YouTube and I'll link all these videos down below. Uh, and then I also added in my own Romeo and Juliet because I thought it would give me a better understanding of one for my enemy. And of all of these, my favorite, we'll go with East of Eden as my singular favorite. This wasn't quite a five, no five stars came from here, but this was a 4.25. And we can thank Emma Chamberlain for making that happen. The next most amount, I don't have them all here, but I technically read this over a series of videos for Summerween. So it wasn't just for one video, but I read, I think seven books over the seven days. And my favorite was Chlorine by Jade Song at a five star. Runner up though, The Haunting of Alejandra by V Castro at a four, as well as these two short story collections. I also read seven books in this vlog where you chose my TBR. I went through my comments and I picked books that I had never really heard of. I also predicted their covers in there. So if you like that series and you haven't checked out that vlog, there's a little bit of that in it. And my favorite from here, my two non-fictions that I read, um, 84 Charing Cross Road and Why Fish Don't Exist were four stars. I read six books in this video where I was going through all of the books on my TBR shelf that I had read the first chapter of and assigned them a number of how interested or how good I thought that first chapter was. And then I read like one that I gave a five, one that I gave a 10, one that I gave a six, seven, eight, nine, to see if the overall rating of the book would match the first chapter. And my favorite from here, again, I had a four with such a fun age and also a four with Skyward. But my favorite from this video was Leech by Huron Ennis. I read five books in this video, which was originally, or it was reading books that I reserved from the library and had like given back and I had to re-reserve because I keep getting library books and then not reading them. So I finally completed five. And now three of these I have purchased myself. And this so far has been my most successful video because we had a four with a history of fear, a four with the God of Endings, a four or a high three with Tell Me Pleasant Things About Immortality, and then a four with Look Closer. Oh no, wait, maybe this is the most successful one because I read some of your childhood favorites and I got to read The Princess Bride, which was a four. And then I didn't really rate uh, the Princess Bride or The Outsiders. I mean, the pr the Little Prince and The Outsiders, but I love them a lot. I think they're great and I understand why people are into them. My most recent vlog, I also read five books in. I still don't have the Pumpkin Spice Cafe here, which was a four, um, but it was just reading some fall inspired reads based on my Instagram Explore page. And I read The Picture of Dorian Gray in it, which was a five star. So that was my favorite. Then we had a vlog where I read three books. I didn't 
know like the general consensus for and I or two of them I had never even really heard of and I wanted to see if I could read them and then guess the Goodreads average rating you'll have to see if I was successful at that and my favorite five star was A Little Devil in America by Hanif Abdurraqib. I also did two vlogs where I was continuing in this mystery series based where I live in Kelowna so I read Bones in the Begonias and made a standalone video for it and then Corpse in the Carnations and did a video for that definitely no favorites to be seen there. And then books that I don't think I made into content in any way. Well, unless you consider book club live shows. So I have these three. Um, my mom is currently reading The Only One Left, so can't wait to find out her review. But I read all three of those for my monthly Literally Dead book club, and my favorite was Monsterlio. I also read three books that I pulled out of my members TBR jar, so if you're a channel member of mine, you have the opportunity to add a book into my TBR jar and I just have to pull one out every month and read whatever it is. Uh, so I read three and Skyward was one of them which was also in a video but I read Do You Dream of Terra 2 by Temi O, oh, which was also four stars and The DeLorean which was not and lastly was these four. So we have a nonfiction People Changed by Vivek Shreya which was a five star, uh, Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong which was a five as well as the inspiration for that Antony and Cleopatra also a five. Now I don't know if you were keeping track during that but getting into my stats uh, there was only eight five stars and one of them was a reread. So if we can have a little commotion for those seven brand new reads of mine that's it seven out of 61 books and then I had 17 four stars 19 three stars and seven two stars. I also left 10 books unrated and that means we have made it nine months into the year and I haven't given out a one star. There have been ones that have been close. I feel like my twos might be a little generous in some cases but so far we have avoided any one star ratings. I don't think I realized how little I was in control of my TBR and how many videos I had planned for this quarter specifically where I was picking things randomly and not just what I wanted to read and build content out of. So just to quickly compare, in the first quarter, this was the ratio of books that I read that I had chosen, 49. The biggest chunk is what I chose for myself and made videos around. And 26 were ones that I made videos around like choosing them in a fun silly way. I feel like that's a decent comparison like two-thirds of the time I'm reading things I want to read and figuring out videos around them and then a third of the time I'm doing weird stuff. For the second quarter it was even more for me. It was 47 that I had picked and 17 specifically for content so books that I probably would have never read in any other capacity. Now in the third quarter, the one that we're talking about here, 30 of the books I chose and 31 of them were for content. The Visco Girls video, the books that um, I picked and wanted to guess their Goodreads rating, the ones where you chose my TBR, the ones where Instagram and Explore page chose my TBR. And obviously there were wins in all of these videos. So it's fine, but I do think it has definitely contributed to my lower average rating than the first couple, the first half of the year. As far as how I was reading the books, I read 31 books physically out of the 61. Um, completely physically, so just with my eyes and a physical book in my hands. 20 or 8 of them were audio exclusively. Um, I don't do that super often unless I start it and I just like love the narrator and I feel like it's a better experience, the audiobook. And then 21 were a mix. So again, if you're asking how I get so much reading done, it is like probably an hour a day via audio because I never want to stop reading a book. Any opportunity, like if I'm physically reading a book for an hour and then I have to go to the grocery store. I'm gonna pop in the audiobook for that 15 minute drive and then 15 minutes home because you know I love reading and I love making videos around what I'm reading. And then there was one ebook which I read on my phone which I regret because that was not a good experience. <laughs> as far as genres, last step before I get into my five favorites, I which you already know what they are because I didn't have very many of them. Um, I read seven horror books, 13 mystery or thriller books, 13 general fiction, eight nonfiction, three romance, five sci-fi, five fantasy, three anthologies, two plays, and two historical fiction books. And something that I have never really talked about that I think we'll have to discuss in my wrap up at the end of the year is the ratio. Because if I think about it, I read 13 general fiction books and two of them were five stars, four or five stars. Like I would say I enjoyed, actively enjoyed two of the general fiction books that I read. However, if we look at horror, I read seven of them and I enjoyed four. So I should probably 
read more horror if it's starting to go well for me. Same with nonfiction, six of the eight was like a four or five star. Only three of my 13 mystery books were four or five stars. So I just think that's something that I should definitely take into account. So let's talk about those horror books and the nonfiction. And there is one fantasy. Let's talk about the fantasy first. That's Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. I'm already planning my December TBR because something that I do at the end of the year, most years, uh, the last few, has been rereading, I would say like four to five of my top 10, just to make sure they are in my top 10. And Immortal Longings is one of those that I read this, gave it five stars, love it. I even talked about in my wrap up that I don't think this is gonna be for everyone. It's gonna be divisive, but I am holding strong in my five star. But it is something that I'm thinking about. Is it gonna be in my favorites? Do I really feel that strongly about it? Do I think it was that good? I'm gonna need to reread it to decide. Because I haven't planned these reviews and I'm just thinking back. I haven't talked to you about this in six weeks. Do I remember that much about it? Can I even pitch this to you right now? So it's Antony and Cleopatra inspired and our main characters are Kala and Anton. And there's this deadly game going on in here. Um, you can body swap. So you can put your, you know, life, your spirit into a different person. Um, you have to wear these bracelets that indicates that you are a player in this game. And there's just a lot of uh, death and things going on. I remember there being a lot of political intrigue that was interesting. There was a lot of uh, that world building and fantasy that I don't feel like we got too much info dump about it, though it was a slow start. There was a ton to learn at the beginning, um, but I don't think it gave you too much and I'm interested to learn more about it and get more clear, more clarity on it in the continuation in the trilogy. Um, but I remember when it got really into the relationship and the fun back and forth and how these two people um, are from different situations and they became like uh, reluctant allies when it seemed like they didn't like each other, but then they fell in love and became kind of obsessed with various things about each other. And I'm just really interested to see where their storyline's gonna go, where the magic system's gonna go, where everything's gonna end because Shakespeare notoriously has very dramatic, traumatic endings. And I just thought that this was great, though I wouldn't recommend it to absolutely everybody. Um, let's go with the nonfiction. My favorite was A Little Devil in America by Hanif Abdurraqib. This is just very much my type of nonfiction. It's a mix of personal anecdotes and teaching. And it's about black performance and um, throughout history, you know, discrimination, but also determination and how certain artists really thrived and how uh, groups of people got together and created this type of artistry or how this type of dance was so important. It's also written by a cultural critic. So he has a lot of knowledge and thoughts and critique to share about the world around him. And I just thought it was very warm and inviting. The writing style itself, and maybe because he's also a poet. I'm just so glad I ended up picking this up and I hope uh, people who haven't will do so based on my endorsement. I don't know. If you typically like the nonfiction that I do. And then lastly, we have three horror books and these are all like literary horror. And if you were following my first half of the year, I was struggling to find horror books that I rated highly and I finally found them, but I still like look at these and don't feel like they are the perfect embodiment of horror that I could recommend to like every horror reader. And I wish that I had more of those under my belt, but these are just each perfect for me in their own way. Uh, we've got Chlorine, the one I read the longest ago. This is about a girl who is on a swim team. She's a competitive swimmer and it's a coming of age story where it talks about a lot of the pressures that teen athletes go through. It's about being taken advantage of um, by different systems and perhaps people and growing up in an environment where there's a lot of pressure on you and a lot of eyes on your body. And it's gruesome, like it's gross, it's weird. Uh, she thinks, she believes she is a mermaid at the end of the, the day, at the end of the book. Um, she believes she's a mermaid. She has a specific mermaid name. She goes through certain uh, transformations that reflect like the idea of puberty and gender and there's a lot of different ways that she's expressing herself in here a lot of metaphors you could take away there's also relationships that she goes through and they are not all 
easy and I just thought it was really raw and disturbing and the perfect embodiment of a literary horror. Then Leech is more sci-fi horror and this one also has a lot to say about um, gender. We're following a doctor who is genderless, is nameless, doesn't really have a clear identity and shares this identity with a bunch of other doctors and they are in charge of learning about different parasites and helping people. There's this chalet and the doctor that we're currently following, uh, the doctor that came before just died. And so they are now here to take over. And they're learning a lot of things in the chalet, all of the different like dynamics between the staff and the Baron and the families. The themes revolve around things like capitalism and humanity, like what makes a person a person. Um, there's a lot of different dynamics in here, abuses of power. It's a book that is intentionally confusing for a while and I think it has a really great payoff and I just loved the weird ambiguity, like cold, also gruesome nature of this. And then finally we have Monstrilio by Gerardo Samano Cordova. And this is a story about grief. We are from four different points of view. Two of them are the parents of this young boy who died. And the mother kept a piece of his lung and believed that it could kind of bring him back or just helped her feel closer to him. And indeed it became sentient and became Monstrilio. And we're following a good amount of time as they are scared of Monstrilio, as Monstrilio gains more of the ability uh, to think for himself. There's a lot of talk about how they view him and if they're treating him too much like their son, if he's like a replacement for their son. They even consider if they should let him live because he's becoming dangerous, but they feel responsible for the creation of him. It's so sad, but beautifully told. And I just think there is such a skill present from this author with making you feel so emotionally attached to this young child who passes away in like the very like on the first page of the book and you already feel or at least me it just was heart-wrenching seeing the parents and various other people in the aftermath of that and it's just like what grief will do to you the exploration of that was so powerful so those are my five favorites of the quarter i'm not sure which ones will make it into my top 10 of the year but i can't wait to find out once i read everything in the next quarter i hope that i have more big wins and i think that i will because in these final three months i am really for the most part choosing everything that i'm gonna read i don't think i have that much silly stuff going on no wait there is some silly stuff to come but i've already filmed it so when i tell you i read 61 books that's actually a lie because i've read a handful of things that are for videos to come but like for me actually in this moment the majority of what i have to read is in my control. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of anything that I shared, any stats of your own that you think are interesting. Uh, if you're going to read any of these books, if you agree with my favorites or you hated them. I don't know. I will see you later though. Bye!